Hi everyone, Kieran here. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through how to use the new selections framework, where it's applicable and use cases for it. The framework is a set of universal selections that let you select the appropriate geometry for operation programming. All geometry selection types are now available across all operations, whether you're performing selections for machining, confining boundaries, or specifying drive curves. This framework also supports the ability to interleave multiple features together in any order to help drive operation productivity, flexibility, and with a clearer directive of the user's intent. It's important to note that this new framework will not affect legacy data selections and only serves to enhance the overall experience of making selections in manufacturing simpler, automated, and more efficient. Let's now start off with how geometry selections are selected for operations. When choosing geometry features for your operation, navigate to the Geometry tab. Geometry features largely consists of, but is not limited to, chains, face contours, pockets, 2D pocket recognition, silhouettes, and sketch profiles. First up, we have chain selection. This can either be a closed, or a open chain. Typically, this is used to guide the tool around the area you want to machine. When you select a chain, a red arrow appears next to the chain. The arrow points counterclockwise when machining on the inside of the chain. This arrow points clockwise when machining on the outside of the chain. You can also click the reverse checkbox to change the cutting side. To select a chain, navigate to the Manufacture Workspace and select an appropriate operation type. In this example, I've selected a 2D contour from the 2D drop-down menu. From the Geometry tab, either pick the geometry directly from the canvas, click the Quick Action Selection, or select the drop-down arrow and select Chain. When dealing with open chains, such as in the example on screen, an extension method can be used. Where tangent is selected, all chains are extended tangentially towards either a user-defined distance or tangentially towards the closest point on a boundary, which in this case is the stock contour boundary defined within the setup. Where closest boundary is selected, all chains can be extended to a user-defined distance or to the closest point of a bounding box, which again is the stock contour defined within the setup. Lastly, where parallel is selected, all intersecting chains are extended in such a way so that they are parallel when they reach the bounding box, whilst all other extensions remain tangential. Open chains also provide some additional controls when selecting distance. Start extension length and end extension length are useful for extending the operation past the selected geometry, ensuring a more consistent surface finish. As a pro tip, where you have adjacent pockets that are separated, you can use the open chaining method to select contours. Then for each of the contours, extend the finish and start lengths respectively. Next, set the outer corner mode to keep sharp corners and make sure to enable keep tool down. This should save some time when programming similar pocket types and help to avoid unnecessary retract moves. Let's now look at the second example, face contours. A face contour is a selection method to automatically select contours that are bound by a face. Selecting a face becomes quicker than selecting individual contours when machining areas that contain geometry such as multiple bosses, upstands, and raised features. To select a face contour, navigate to the Manufacture Workspace and select an appropriate operation type. From the Geometry tab, Select the drop-down arrow and select Face Contour. 
you'll now notice a face contours dialog appears. From the selection button, select the face contour you want to include in the selection. If multiple faces are on the same plane, you can automatically select them by clicking the Select Same Plane Faces checkbox. A top tip here is that some of the contour selections can automatically be limited by selecting a suitable loop type option. All loops, outer loops only, or inner loops only can be specified. Selecting face contours on the same plane will highlight all face contours on that height. A suitable open or closed face can be selected. When dealing with open faces, such as in the example on screen, the same extension methods can be used as that found when chaining. Let's now move on to pocket selections. As per the name, this allows you to select either open or closed pockets to machine. To select a pocket, navigate to the Manufacture workspace and select a suitable operation type. In this example, I've selected the flat strategy from the 3D drop-down menu. From the Geometry tab, select the Machining Boundary drop-down arrow and choose Selection. From the drop-down, now pick the Pocket option. You'll now notice a Pockets dialog has appeared. From the Selection button, select the pocket you want to include in the selection. If multiple faces are on the same plane, you can automatically select them by clicking the Select Same Plane Faces checkbox. Where open pockets are applicable, you can again define the extension method in the same way as that found in chaining and face contours. However, extension types are not supported within pockets. Another pro tip here is, using the pocket methods, you can also join adjacent pockets that are separated. Simply select both pockets and make sure to keep tool down and hit calculate. Again, this should help avoid some unnecessary retract moves. Next up, we have pocket recognition. Pocket recognition automates the process of selecting closed pockets when programming operations. This can provide significant time savings when programming parts that have numerous pockets of different sizes. Pocket recognition only selects edges and not faces and can be used on several operations. When creating an operation, specifying the ranges of a pocket's corner radius and depth define how pockets are identified. To select pocket recognition, navigate to the manufacturer workspace and select an appropriate operation type. In this example, I've selected the flat strategy from the 3D drop-down menu. From the geometry tab, select the machining boundary drop-down arrow and choose selection. From the drop-down, now pick pocket. You'll now notice a pockets dialog appears. The minimum and maximum corner radius refers to the internal radius of the corners of the model. The minimum corner radius value should match or be greater than the radius of the tool that you are machining with. When in the manufacture workspace, you can use the measure tool from the inspect menu to check the radius of internal corners on pockets. You can also click a corner edge in canvas and view the radius information in the bottom right of the canvas. For a pocket to be selected by pocket recognition, all its corner radii need to be within the specified minimum corner radius and the maximum corner radius values. In the example on screen, the smallest corner radius is 2 mm and the largest corner radius is 20 mm. For the pocket to be recognized, the minimum corner radius needs to be equal to or smaller than 2 mm whilst the maximum corner radius needs to be equal to or larger than 20 mm. The pocket depth is relative to each pocket, which is measured as the distance between the top and the bottom of the pocket. 
You can use the minimum depth and maximum depth parameters to control which pockets are recognized. In the example below, the depth of the pockets starting from the left are 5 mm, 10 mm, and 15 mm. To recognize only the 10 mm middle pockets, you must enter a minimum depth larger than 5 mm and a maximum depth smaller than 15 mm. Geometrically, holes and circular pockets are the same. Use the include holes parameter to allow pocket recognition to consider circular pockets and holes in the selection. Then use the minimum hole diameter to control which circular pockets and holes are selected. The minimum corner radius also restricts which circular pockets are selected. Quite often, the minimum corner radius is set to equal the radius of the tool that you are using meaning any circular pockets that the tool does not fit in are not included in the selection. Penultimately, we have the silhouette selection. This is a useful selection for when you want to cut all the way around a part. Silhouette is particularly suited to parts with overhangs or rounded sides where it's not possible to use other selection methods such as chain selection. In these cases, the silhouette selection can be useful in particular with nested or arranged components. A silhouette is the boundary of the part when viewed from the z-axis of the work coordinate system or WCS. The silhouette selection selects one silhouette per body. So if you select multiple bodies, you'll get multiple silhouette selections. To select a silhouette, navigate to the Manufacture workspace and select a suitable operation type. In this example, I've selected a 2D contour from the 2D drop-down menu. From the Geometry tab, select the drop-down arrow and select Silhouette. You'll now notice a Silhouette dialog appear. As discussed in previous examples, using the Loops feature allows you to limit which portions of the silhouette are included for machining. Lastly, you can use a sketch profile selection to guide a tool to cut specific geometry. Navigate to the Manufacture workspace and select an appropriate operation type. In this example, I've selected a trace operation from the 2D drop-down menu. From the Geometry tab, select the drop-down arrow and select Sketch Profile. You'll now notice a Sketch Profile dialog appears. As discussed in previous examples, Using the Loops feature allows you to limit which portions of the applicable sketches are consumed within the operation. It's worth noting that the selected sketch profile from the browser remains associative to that sketch should something change within it. You can use a sketch profile selection to guide a tool to cut specific geometry. This provides greater control in cases where you cannot automatically select the geometry you want to cut. You can draw a sketch in the design workspace or import the sketch as a DXF and use it when programming an operation in the manufacture workspace. The sketch profile selection uses all the sketch entities within a sketch. The sketch, however, must be selected from the browser instead of the canvas. To finish this all off, geometry selections are now associative across operations. Where geometry selections have been selected for an operation, a node will be created within the browser for that specific operation. When creating subsequent operations, simply select the already created node within the geometry selections area to associatively link to it. Notice the link icon on the consumed geometry. It's important to note that the associated geometry is linked to the original operation geometry selection, and modifying the original geometry will result in all associated operations containing the linked geometry to be automatically recalculated. It's also important to note 
that associated geometries within operations can be edited or have the associative link broken. To do this, simply expand the operation within the browser. Right click on the associated geometry and click Edit and navigate to the Geometry tab. Clicking on the associated geometry will prompt the user to either edit the source chain and push the change back through all the operations which utilize the associated chain in question, or choose to break the link and sever any associativity going forwards. The new framework provides a powerful, simple, and automated approach to selecting geometry for operation creation. Be sure to check the link in the description below for other content creators' videos on this topic. I hope you found this tutorial useful. We release new content regularly, so hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. From me, cheers.